The astronomers have long been the leading theorists on the possibility of life in outer space. Astronomer Carl Sagan is consultant to a current Air Force scientific panel. Astronomer Thornton Page was on a CIA committee that investigated UFO reports in 1952. Its conclusion? No evidence of UFOs. Our panel was expected to be, and I think was, uh, objective in its approach and tried to um, evaluate all the reports uh, without saying they're ridiculous in advance. That uh, has been repeated quite recently, uh, and that is a good reason for uh, talking with Carl Sagan here, because uh, he's in the same position that I was, being the only astronomer in a similar panel. Um, there's not a single uh, verified or checked out report which uh, is at all connected with, uh, with the possibility of extraterrestrial life. It doesn't say that I, I think extraterrestrial life uh, is impossible. Quite the contrary, I think that uh, many of the stars in the sky have planetary systems. We know enough now about the origin of life to uh, make it appear likely that uh, life arises naturally uh, on the vast bulk of these planets. Uh, it's possible, but by no means certain, that life uh, uh, on many of these planets evolves into beings which are uh, as advanced as we, or more advanced. Uh, and I don't see any reason why we can't imagine that there are civilizations thousands or millions of years in advance of ourselves capable of technical feats that we, uh, we can hardly imagine. If you would believe, as, uh, as the flying saucer cultists would have us believe, that uh, the, the majority of the saucer reports are due to visitations, they have a very strange situation. That means several spaceships are coming to the Earth over interstellar distances every day as if all the anthropologists in the world would converge on one of the, the Andaman Islands in the Indian Ocean uh, or because they just invented the fishnet there or something. Uh, I think it's uh, much more reasonable if you, uh, if you want to speculate on the possibility of, of extraterrestrial intelligence that uh, there are very rare visits from extraterrestrials to the Earth. There's no evidence for this. I just say that's not implausible. But to have several visits a day, I think, is straining credulity. I think a key to what's behind the, uh, the real belief in flying saucers is most easily obtained if you look at the contact myths. There are several hundred people in, in the United States who claim to have had personal contact with the inhabitants of flying saucers who have landed. And if you examine these myths, you find that uh, there are some peculiar regularities. The uh, inhabitants of saucers are benevolent, I mean, they're really concerned for our well-being. They are omnipotent, extremely powerful, omniscient, extremely knowledgeable, and uh, they often wear long white robes. Now, this combination is something I've heard in another context. This isn't science, this is religion. Uh, and uh, what I suspect is happening is this. We live in, a, in very unsettled times. Uh, it used to be possible to believe in a personal, benevolent, powerful, all-knowing God who cared about individuals who you could pray to, but now, there's very few people who really believe that, I think. Uh, science, for good or for ill, has destroyed a lot of the traditional theologies. Uh, and yet, people have the same needs to believe that they always did, perhaps more so, because of the times we live in. Well, the flying saucer myths are a really clever compromise. It's a way of having beings that come from the sky, that are worried about us, that are powerful, um, that are going to step in and prevent us from destroying ourselves, as we may very well might, uh, and yet have it in the cloak of science, so that no one can say nonsense that doesn't match science. It's all very pseudo-scientific. I would think that, uh, well, at least for the contact myths and probably for a lot of the uh, events of people who just see things that understand flying overhead, uh, but what's involved uh, psychology and theology and not so much the physical sciences. So, as we have seen, scientists think the evidence is mounting that life in some form exists elsewhere in the universe. But almost unanimously, they find no evidence that anything out there has come here. One thing is clear. You could not keep a spaceship a secret. Too many professionals with too many powerful instruments are probing the skies these days. Too many journalists could not be restrained from trumpeting one of the greatest news stories of all time. It also seems clear 
that since the security of our world is involved in converting all UFOs immediately into IFOs, perhaps these phenomena are properly the responsibility of scientists and the military, with periodic reports to the public on what they have found, if anything. The rest of us can emulate the scientists by keeping an open mind since yesterday's fantasy sometimes turns into tomorrow's reality. Well, we might remember, too, that while fantasy improves science fiction, science is more often served by facts. This is Walter Grand Guide for CBS Reports. Good night.